Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another episode of The Real Housewives of New York. And this is season 15, and this is episode two. It is called You Can Run, But You Can't Ride. So, this actually, I liked this episode a little bit more than the first episode. Maybe because it just felt like this wasn't as produced as of an uh, episode. Minus one person, and I'm going to definitely get to that one person. I, I, I'll be honest, let me just get right to it. I don't think I'm going to like Bren. Um, and I hate that for, I hate that. Like, I wanted to like her because she, you know from indiana originally but i kind of already was clocking her last season a little bit when it came to her, her over flirtation and kind of doing the most and i don't know she's just giving thirst for me and i'm not i'm not with it um and i don't know it's just there to me there just is a fakeness about her and i'm not really it's it's so obvious that there's a fakeness and that's just kind of, it's, it's too much for me. So, um, also to the other mini elephant in the room. Yes, I'm not on camera. If you did not see my review for Real Housewives of Potomac, um, I also did explain. So, because there's so many shows to review, I will be probably only going on camera about twice a week because this is a lot to review. So, Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode started off with um, Aaron sporting a fresh new haircut. She did end up getting her mom her haircut similar to like how her mom's hair was before the chemo started, um, because it was revealed in the season premiere that Aaron's mom is battling breast cancer, and so she's trying to do everything she can to support her. And so this season. Aaron's really just having a rough go. So I would say, I, you know, last season I found her very high strong, very annoying. And this season, I, I'm giving her a lot more grace because maybe this was happening behind the scenes see, the first season and we didn't know about it. And now this is what it is, you know. But I also feel like she also is partially high strong. But... I don't know when I see her in scenes with her husband and they talk about how they were before they got married. I don't think she's like that all the time. I think she's kind of laid back, but I think she just has a thing about her when it's necessary and when it's needed. She's high strung. But anyway, my point is I'm trying to give her grace. But anyway, so she is at this um, wig shop going shopping with her mom um, for a nice wig while she's going through chemo something of course that will look like her actual natural hair and uba does go to meet her and we also find out that uba was the first in the group to know about aaron's mom's breast cancer and it actually kind of shares and highlights how close uba and aaron are um since they had that blow up and i think they were close even before that blow up but i think after the blow up and after they talked things out last season, um, they are a lot closer, um, very clearly. And Uba, for those who did not watch the last season, Uba lost her mom quite a few years ago. So I think there's a couple reasons why Aaron reached out to her, not only because their friendship is a repaired friendship. And also, I mean, I think also because Uba does come off as someone who's very caring. And also she can identify with, you know, there's a, she has a softness when it comes to um, relationships, people and their moms because of, you know, her no longer having a mom. Even last season, Sai and her kind of got close because of that too. So this is a pretty cute scene here. Um, so what they talk about though after they kind of go to get done with the shopping is they talk about the aftermath of Bryn talking talking about Aaron to Jenna and causing that whole entire problem that Jenna and Aaron have because now Jenna is kind of viewing Aaron differently and if you look at um and later on in the episode it is apparent that 
Jenna does look at Aaron differently now. Um, and then also Aaron kind of shares like, you know, the obvious. And I think it's the obvious. I think that Bryn, from what I'm seeing so far, getting to know her, she likes to embellish the truth. So there's truth in what she's saying, but she puts a lot of extra stank in it. Like she's kind of, to me, she reminds me of Giselle. Um, and not in a good way. <laughs> and then also besides that, um, so after talking to Uba about that, Uba, um, Aaron does talk to Uba about Abe and we do kind of get a little bit of what's going on, but we still don't know exactly what it is. Um, we find out that Abe made a decision without her and it, it definitely seems like it's a major decision. Um, we actually do find out later on the episode what the decisions were because it wasn't just one decision and yeah so um uba because she doesn't know the context of it she doesn't really know really what to say to her but it, it is enough where aaron's emotional about it because apparently aaron found out all these things about abe and his decisions right as she's trying to deal with her mom having breast cancer so she's already in a vulnerable state but then having to navigate um her husband withholding major bits of information from her um and from this scene alone it told me it wasn't infidelity you know i think initially in the first episode we thought that's what it was and you can tell um with this it's not that it's something else though um and i mean spoiler alert, it was major next we have this super awkward scene of Sai and jenna meeting for lunch and um Sai is talking to jenna about you know her so apparently um Sai's daughter is looking at middle schools and high schools to go to well i think it was a high school and apparently high schools in new york it's a whole entire thing and i kind of think it is a little bit like that here in chicago because there are some major high schools where like you can get into um but i think new york is a lot it's a lot different of a beast because they have a lot of performing arts schools and things of that nature so and um size daughter wants to go to one of those and so there's auditioning and everything that's entailed in that and so she's kind of picking jenna's brain on that because her um her son, you know, had that too. So, and ended up, you know, Jenna's son already kind of went through all these things. So, um, Jenna's a good source for this. And, um, so from there, Sai apologizes to Jenna again, but then she also vents about Bryn and how, you know, she feels like she kind of took two steps backwards when it came to her yelling at Bryn honestly i disagree uh bryn deserved every bit of that i did not feel any way that she did all that um and i don't think jenna feels a way about it either per se but i don't know it, it definitely seems like um jenna was trying to be the neutral for the most part but i did catch jenna throwing a little bitty like jabs of shade in there because I, jenna not letting it go that size says she don't like her and i i get it but Sai at the same time did mention that she prejudged her so i mean i guess it is in your timing of when you forgive people but it, it definitely seems like from what i'm gathering this this episode was unintentionally very informed it, it gave me more information about jenna without her knowing that she was giving me more information Jenna's not the forgiving type. She don't forgive and forget. I feel like the first season um, of this reboot, we thought that's what she does, but every uh, there's a lot of jabs at Jenna, passive aggressive jabs, like mind you, that tells me she ain't really that forgiving type for real right away. And also what Bryn shared in another scene, and I. I I don't know if I should believe Bryn or not, but I think in this case I kind of do, but who knows. Um, also too, um, another thing that was shared was Sai also feels away in more ways than one because Sai and Bryn were super, super close um, 
throughout the years and even before this reboot, like they're actually friends before the show. And Sai, you know, would basically kind of be the extended family for her because, you know, Bryn really only has her brother and that's it. Um, if you know the background of um, Bryn. And so she feels like really, really hurt that like Sai, sorry, that Bryn won't like, you know, talk to her so they can actually hash things out. Because before that blow up happened, Sai was wanting to like talk things out. But Bryn is not willing to do that. And Sai even wrote like a long message trying to clear the air and Bryn wasn't having that. She left it on red. Um, and um, Bryn, and we also find out that Bryn behind the scenes is just as bad as Sai when it comes to the aggression, but it's all through text and email. It's not in public. So it, it's, it's, it's very <sighs> hypocritical, but I am glad that Sai brought to light. She's like, look, she does the same thing, but she's doing it through email and this, that, and this, and, uh, and that's not much of a difference. And let me know what your thoughts are. I actually kind of agree with Sai when it comes to this, because I guess maybe I'm projecting a little bit. I cannot stand passive aggressiveness and stuff through like emails and text message. Like, you know, if you're going to be the villain, be the villain, go all in on that. But, um, so we find out that Bryn made this comment about like, you know, if you cross me, I'm like carbon monoxide and just like kind of threatening the girls, like literally. And it's like, uh, Sai yells and stuff, but I don't think she's ever really threatened the girls. So there is definitely a difference here. Um, yeah. So next we have a mini housewives montage. And so it's like, um, Pavit with Jessel and the kids, um, basically are at martial arts class. And then from there we have Uba with her personal trainer trying to get, you know, link, like get in shape. And then she, all she's doing during this time is so she's talking about like her boyfriend <laughs> and having babies. And it's so cute. Like she's so in love with this guy. And, um, then after that side note, Jessel wasn't really in this episode much and neither really was, um, Raquel, but this was the one short scene that we did get with Raquel and her family. And, um, she's making pasta with the kids. And then we go on this whole entire talk about her, um, girl for her, I'm um, sorry, her fiance, um, making food for their dogs, but not making them food. And it was, it was, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not sure what to think of Raquel yet. Um, her story seems interesting enough, but I don't know. I feel like they're, I don't know. Maybe next episode we'll get more information, but because this was like the only scene, there really wasn't much to go off of, but it was very short and cute scene. Next we have, um, we're at Bryn's apartment and, um, Bryn's getting ready for Aaron to meet her. And I'll be honest, I felt like a lot of what was happening here was kind of, I don't know. It was a little weird. Um, <laughs> so we find out, um, so, cause Aaron co goes to meet her and Aaron finds out the hard way that her elevator is broken. And so she had to walk up all these stairs to get to her apartment and once Erin is there, she is super rude. Like she gives her water, but that's it. But also too, I do, I did find it weird also that Erin didn't bring anything for her. I don't know. I feel like if you show up at someone's house and it's planned, you really should have something to bring to their place. Maybe that's me. Um, Younger me wouldn't do that, but I would say I really started really practicing what I preach when it comes to that. I would say really since like my mid thirties and yes, I'm, I'll, I'll full transparency. It was late to party to realize that that's, that's something you should be doing. But also too, the money was funding for a long time too. So there's that, but um, for me, um, but so it was just a really awkward scene to begin with because Bryn was just being really, really cold. And you could tell that Aaron was there to clear the air. And 
immediately Bryn made it about the made it about Aaron not have having her back with size attacking her. And I ain't gonna hold you. She sounded like a Karen. I and I think that's my problem with Bryn. I think Bryn is a Karen. <laughs> I really think Bryn is a Karen. And I can't. I can't. Because then even when she was com like, you know, going off on Aaron for size actions, mind you, because she ain't got that energy for Sai because she knows Sai will, Sai will get her all the way together, which again is Karen, Karen-esque moves. She's basically taking it all out on Aaron for Aaron not having her back when she's a grown woman. And then... She turns it from that to how Aaron didn't have her back at the, um, the, the podcast she was on with Jeff Lewis. Even though all these women have watched Real Housewives, all these women are very aware of Jeff Lewis. Why would you take anything that Jeff Lewis says seriously? And also, why would you... And even what Jeff Lewis said, it really wasn't even all that bad. Like, honestly, Brenda's putting 20 on 10. And the other thing I will say is, you know, last season, I feel like we felt like Aaron was like this. And it turns out, I don't think Aaron was the one that was like this. I think it was actually Brenda the whole entire time. But Brenda would turn it around. And now I'm kind of catching it because it's like, Aaron's just like, what are we talking about? But Erin being the person that she is, she does apologize, which even though honestly, I did not feel like she needed to apologize. And then Brynn apologizes after the fact. And then she does admit that she only did that, all of that to get back at Erin for the Jeff Lewis thing when it comes to her and Jenna. And I'm like, that's really, really messed up. And then we find out that Brynn also, so... When Bren was talking to Jenna about what was going on, uh, Jenna said like, oh, so you forgave her already for that Jeff Lewis interview? That was quick, according to Bren. Because, so I don't know if we should believe this or not, but based off of this episode, I feel like I feel like I kind of believe Bren when it comes to this. Because I think Jenna is that petty. I think Je Jenna is like more petty than we know. Um, and so then from there, then that's when, um, Aaron, Bryn mentions the, um, broke car thing, but either way, it's just like Bryn, I, uh, I don't know. But so Aaron catches, catches that she's like, so you forgave me, but then you took back that you forgave me because you forgave me too quickly. And to me, if I was Aaron, I don't know if I would even believe that she forgave me this time. Because what gauge am I to know that you really forgave me versus you just saying the words? So from there, and I, I, I just really wish Aaron wouldn't have did this, but I, I do understand that Bryn and Aaron had a relationship prior to the show, and I guess they or like siblings, the way they interact with each other. But it's toxic, though. Yeah, so I, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't trust it just because um, it just appears. So basically, after Aaron kind of breaks down about like everything's going on with her mom, which I would not have told Bryn all of that just because, I don't know, it just seems like you really can't trust her. Um Aaron, I mean, Brynn didn't appear to have any emotions about it, which kind of bothered me. So, but anyway, that's pretty much where the scene ends for the most part. Because then even Brynn like, states in her confessional, like, yeah, we're like siblings. And honestly, you know, now after all this happened, I feel much closer to her. And the way I read that, I was like, oh, seeing her cry and break down, now you feel closer to her. And she's like, yeah, it's kind of toxic. And then she laughs. And I'm like, Oh, so you like toxicity, but if you, you remember what we learned about Bryn and her, well, lack of family, positive family upbringing, it checks. And I don't want to be judgmental, but like, there's a common denominator when it comes to all of the drama. And 
And I kind of feel a way that you're doing this to Aaron when you know what's going on with her and her mom. It's it's kind of it's low hanging fruit. And it's like you should probably leave her alone. But anyway, that's where the scene ends. Next, we have a scene with um, Jenna, and she's there with like her her son and um, her one of her friends and her assistant. And they are going rock climbing because apparently her son enjoys doing that. And this is one of the last time she has to kind of bond with him before he goes away to college um, because this is his final year in high school. And they kind of talk about college and all that good stuff. It was a cute scene. And we also see um, Jenna conquer her fears with rock climbing because she's afraid of height. Um, we see that too. And then also, besides talking about school, we find out that Jenna really does want her son to kind of do what she did and go away from home. Like, don't, you know, really see the world. And even though when she did the same thing, she did not go back home, but she's, she still wants that for him, which is beautiful. Also, too, we do see that... Um, she ends up getting a new car and this car is about the same price as a one bedroom condo here in Chicago. I, <laughs> it was a 2024 Bentley for um, $215,000 and it's a hybrid. And she does take a, quite a few opportunities in this scene to shade um, Aaron and her comment about her running out of gas. But Jenna, I am kind of looking at you funny because did you ever pay her that Uber money? I'm just saying, you know, you can feel a way about this all you want, but at the same time, I'm sorry. Like, if, if, if my friend's going to comic and make a, I guess I, as me, me as a friend, there's, okay, there's two things. From Aaron's part, I don't loan people money expecting money back, but I also don't really loan people money, so there was that. And then also, too, I'm a type of person, if you do pay for something for me, I will be paying you back. Um, whether it be the next bill or whatever, that is the game plan. At least I try to do that. I have some friends that just won't ever let me do it, but I try. So, I don't know. It it is definitely petty and I'm not sure if I should take Jenna seriously or not. Cause I don't, I can't really tell with, with her sarcasm. Is she being sarcastic as far as like seriously, or is she just doing this as like shady household antics? Next. Um, and right real quick, I probably should share this too. So my mic I was using actually went out in the middle of me reviewing this and my backup mic was not charged either, my portable mic, and I do not feel like getting plugged into my major mic I normally use anyway, because that's honestly not the best quality mic. I, I honestly, at some point, I need to invest in getting a better mic, and I'm probably gonna do those things when I move. But anyway, that's not why we're here. So the next thing, though, we have um, with um, Aaron and Abe, and this is where they go out to dinner, and we also find out what the issues are and what is it that Aaron is so upset with Abe about and what the betrayals were. And what I must say is they were valid. Um, <laughs> and it also feels, it kind of puts everything together. And yeah. Um, so one of the things that we find out in this scene is that Abe sold some Bitcoin, their Bitcoin that they had together behind Aaron's back and didn't tell her. And yeah, that, and also sold it in a lot at a loss. And because the, what Aaron was looking to possibly do is they were going to use that Bitcoin money to, you know, pay off their mortgage and then found out, oh, it's not there because I sold it. And it turned out that Abe sold it years ago before she actually discovered that it was sold and that's crazy and so we thought that's the only thing no 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 no. that was not the only thing then the other thing that we find out is that 
So prior to, I guess, Aaron and Abe really getting married, like, and being together like that, Abe had his own business. That was his business on his own that Aaron was not a part of. So Aaron and Abe discussed him selling the business and him, you know, kind of taking, going away from the business. Unbeknownst to Aaron, he never did do that and accumulate a ton of debt and put them both in debt because the business ended up failing and they had to take a huge loss. And yeah, um, so a lot of their issues are that he withholds information from Aaron and their financial related um, issues. So that also explains why, you know, Aaron is someone who talks about finances a lot because <laughs> apparently at home she's having those issues. So hopefully if Jenna saw, sees this and maybe Aaron even talks to Jenna about it, maybe she'll be more understanding that, you know, Aaron wasn't really trying to be shady, but like Aaron's going through her own stuff when it comes to this, the, the finances and stuff. And I believe, I thought la towards the end of last season, we overheard some rumors about the money being kind of funny when it comes to Aaron and Abe. And maybe this is tied to that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, they didn't go into huge details when it comes to this, but Abe did have his own, have his own confessional. And he did try to, you know, talk about where he's coming from with this. He doesn't want to basically be more of a burden towards Aaron when it comes to these newses, unfortunate newses when it comes to finances. So instead, he takes it upon himself to do the finances on his own. And a lot of it, I'll be honest, when I listened back when I was watching this, it has a lot to do with patriarchy. Um, and he's trying to break it and he's trying to be better about it. But they're supposed to be a team. And Aaron came with her own money. And we find out why Abe is the way he is. Because not only did she come with her own money. She came from a background where she didn't need for nothing. And Abe was someone who had to work up to get to where he's at. So he feels like he has to do the most to help with her lifestyle. Because prior to them dating and being together... Aaron had, it sounds like Aaron also had sugar daddy and didn't have to do much other than look pretty and get flown out. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I had no idea Aaron was a city girl before uh, her and Abe got married. And also too, we did find out, I think last season that Abe and Aaron, they got married very quickly once they started dating. So they didn't really know each other. So these 16 years of marriage is literally 16 years of them getting to know each other. They didn't really have that courtship time. They've been doing the courtship time while, while they've been married. So it does add more to perspective, but I will say this. I don't think Aaron's overreacting. I think this is very, very valid. And Aaron, you know, she says, you know, if something like this happens again, we're, we're, I, we're not going to make it. And honestly, I don't know how I would even feel about it. If I was to find out that my spouse made some financial decisions that really did some damage and did not, and I was not included in it, I would feel a way, especially since this is not a situation where she's like a homemaker and he has the money. It's their money, like legitimately their money. So yeah. Also, I forgot to add, so before they got serious when it came to their marriage, um, Abe did ask about how did the conversation with her and Bren go. Um, Aaron said it went fine, but she just wants, Aaron is being cautious about it. She's like, I just hope that this stays for once because apparently this is just their friendship. And I, again, it can never be me. I, I can't deal with friendships that are like that personally but that's that's kind of where they're at with it abe wasn't surprised we heard any of this because it sounds like this is definitely their ebbs and flows of their friendship but it just sounds really it sounds like a super petty and immature friendship and i just i'm past that point in life i can't do that um that but that's just me anyway and then the other thing that we did find out with this scene is that 
Um, Erin did invite all the girls to the Hamptons and it sounds like she has a different place. Like she brought a new place at the Hamptons. So it's not going to be the same place that they were at before. Um, but the kitchen is not done yet. And so she's hoping it will get done on time. And I'm like, girl, but Erin says that she's used to these things because for those who don't know, I think I mentioned in the first episode, but Erin's in real estate. So this is just like, you know, part of what happens here um, when it comes to fixing things up and mean deadlines. This is literally her thing. But also too, I think now that I say that, that actually makes sense why Erin is so high strong. In order to be in that type of a business, you would have to be high strong in order to make that work especially from a professional standpoint. Um, I can't imagine someone being super laid back in that type of an industry. So next we have Uba and um, she is at um, a store shopping for their tri her trip to the Hamptons, um, you know, the girls trip. And then Sai joins her also. And honestly, I love Sai and Uba together. They're like, to me, they're like peanut butter and jelly, especially this version of Psy. I feel like Psy, so far, and this is just the past two episodes, I feel like we're seeing a softer version of Psy. Um, I, I feel like last season she was so just like tough, but like it didn't translate well on TV. I feel like this season she's a little bit more laid back and not as obnoxious. I think she's toned that down by quite a bit. And I will say this is a case of seeing yourself on TV being a good thing. I will say that because I so far are so good. I'm like inside this season. Um, anyway, so they're talking about the trip and then it gets mentioned about the helicopter because apparently um, it was there was an idea of the girls basically getting to the Hamptons in style via helicopter. And Uba straight up, straight up saying, I'm not going to go into a helicopter with, with um, uh, she's like, I'd rather drive. But we know also the other reason why she don't want to be in a helicopter. She does not want to be in a helicopter with Bryn because her and Bryn still have unresolved issues. And really, Sai and Uba, they basically were venting to each other about how Bryn is and how she twists people's words and things of that nature. Which is definitely obvious. She definitely does do that. Um, but like Uba is seeing a pattern that she just keeps doing this with people. And Uba still hasn't really forgiven her for exposing her relationship to the public like that. Even though technically Sai was the one who did it. But it's just the way she did it. She like literally let everybody know. And it was very crass and not okay. And Brynn never really... I don't, think Bryn even ever apologized for doing that. So Sai did apologize. So I think that's a huge difference there too. But anyway, so Uba basically is just like, I don't trust her and I don't even understand. And Uba stated why I kind of stated earlier. She's like, I don't understand why Aaron would trust any secrets with that with her because she twists things around. And honestly, it does appear that way. And yeah, I kind of, at this point, I agree with Uba and, um, previews for the next episode, um, Brenda and Uba get into it. <laughs> so I, I'm, it's not that shocking that that happens, but anyway, so Sai also, you know, still isn't, doesn't have her issues resolved with, um, Bren. And so the helicopter conversation comes up and Sai's like, I'll just ride with you. I'm not going to go in a helicopter. And so that's two of the women not doing the helicopter. And next we're at the final scene here. So the final scene is um, some of the ladies at the helicopter spot about to go in this helicopter. So we have Bryn, um, Jessel, and then Becky, um, Minkoff. And, um, <laughs> so they're all waiting for everyone else to get there, but then it is discussed that Uba and Sai will not be joining them. And then they call Jenna cause they thinking they're waiting on Jenna, but Jenna child did the same thing she did last season, not communicating cause 
One thing I learned that it seems to be obvious with Jenna, she does not, she's not a great communicator. Um, at least that's kind of what I picked up last season because she did she did a similar thing last season. Um, so the girls were like, you're in the car. Are you not coming to the house? She's like, oh, I didn't know that you guys didn't know I wasn't doing that. And they're like, no, yeah, you didn't tell us that you weren't going to join us for the helicopter. She's like, oh, yeah, no, I thought you knew I got my car to get today. So, yeah, I'm going to be driving my car to the Hamptons. And so they were like, okay. <laughs> that was pretty much it there. And then also like, oh, and by the way, um, Raquel's also driving too. And Bryn was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about her. I was like, ooh. And I ain't going to hold you. I kind of forgot about her too. Yeah. Anyway, so then after that, they do eventually get on the helicopter, or the three of them. And Bryn just doing the most and just kind of just, again, I don't think I'm going to like Bryn. Um, she then mentions, she asks, and this is while they're in the air, they're stuck in the air in this helicopter. And there's clearly there's turbulence happening. And as loud as all get out, because again, it's a helicopter. Bren takes it upon herself to ask Becky, what, sh how should they respond to um, the media or people if they get any questions about um, Becky and her being in sign in into Scientology? And Becky's like kind of giving her kind of short, cold answers. And then in their confessional, she's like, you're asking me about a religion that I really believe in, in the airway, I could barely hear you. And honestly, she had a point. She's like, it's clear that you're doing this. You're not doing this for the right reasons. So I'm not going to give you the answers you're looking for, for the right reasons at this moment. And then Bryn took it upon like, well, it was just really weird because she didn't really answer the question. And she twisted around to be something else. And we already know that Bryn is going to use this later on because what we have learned about ladies on these housewife shows that do all this pot stirring is so that we don't talk about them. And this is why I'm not seeing it for Bren. <laughs> so y'all like Bren, you should probably not watch my recaps when it comes to Real Housewives in New York. But anyway, that does conclude the episode though. It was Again, to me, I think it was better than the first episode. Um, hopefully next week I'll be on camera, but I, 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 I it's a lot to review. But anyway, um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your old Sharon, aka the Melman Inside Runner. I will see you next time. Bye.